Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Real Talk with Saeed Ali. I am your host Saeed. We do want to thank you for joining us tonight, Tuesday the 4th of October 2022. It's a privilege to be here at Trinidad and Tobago. Remember we are live on Synergy Network from Monday to Friday from 7.30 from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. nightly with a rerun the next day from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 PM. Now, viewers on the social media platform, we are on Facebook, Real Talk with Said Ali on Facebook. We are on YouTube, TT Real Talk, subscribe. We are also on the number one social media platform around the world. It's TikTok. Said Ali Real Talk. One word, Said Ali Real Talk. Search us, like us, add us, share us. So your friends and family wouldn't know about the number one current affairs program in Trinidad and Tobago. So remember, I'm a licensed money lender. Those of you who are looking for cash borrow, it's not a problem. As long as you have some form of security or collateral that we could hold, it's not a problem. Lending is not the problem. The problem is your security, your collateral. As long as you have it, we will do business with you. So if you are a real job group of company, is offering to you again. 3.5% on our fixed deposit interest per year. Once you open a fixed deposit system with us, you're getting 3.5%. Now, now viewers, ask yourself, with times are getting harder, what are you going to do with the money that you have in the bank that is sitting down and doing nothing? <clears throat> hmm? We have property tax coming up soon. We have increase in fuel price, increase, increase in grocery item, increase in taxi fares. Everything keeps going up and your money in the bank remaining the same. So what are you going to do? Are you going to invest it or are you just going to leave it right there? After five years, it remains right there. Hmm? Choice is yours. 3.5% is yours to be earned at the end of every 12 months. In the coming weeks, <coughs> Realtor Credit Union information will be opening its doors. So, this is what I want you to do. If you want to be a member of Realtor Credit Union, as of tomorrow, as of tomorrow, if you want to be a member, you can call us at 339 1670 238 6716 267 7325 or 242 7690. Put the numbers on the screen uh, on our banner. <coughs> so, viewers, we are going to upload the numbers on screen. We're going to have it on screen. If you want to be a member of the Real Talk Credit Union information <coughs> that is in process, Feel free to contact us. Now remember, our fixed deposit will be 3.5%. You get a 2% on your savings at the end of 12 months, your annual savings. We're giving you that. So if you want to be a member, listen carefully. If you want to be a member with the great rewards, your child could be a member. Remember, in, in banks, it's short, Trinidad Tobago. 
you cannot open an account for your child. So if you want to be a member, <clears throat> you want your child to be a member, listen carefully. Avoid the rush. Avoid the rush. You're getting the opportunity to call us. 339 1670 267 1620 or 247 6900. Be a member of the Realtor Credit Union. That is information. And get benefits. Get benefits. Because in no other institution in Trinidad and Tobago, you're going to get the benefits. Like what you'll be getting in real talk credit union. And that is information presently. So hopefully in the first week in, in November, we're going to open it up to the public. If you want to be a member, it's a community-based organization. But nevertheless, nevertheless, as long as you want to be a member, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. So as we start up our program tonight, viewers, like I said, it's a pleasure to be here one more time. It's a pleasure to come here every night, Monday to Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. to serve the people. We're giving you the views, the interviews, the highlights, news in depth. News in depth. No other station does it like Real Talk with Said Ali. So, the Minister of Finance, Brian Manning, <clears throat> is calling for an end to the fuel subsidy on premium gasoline saying if your vehicle needs premium you should be able to afford it i want to buy a vehicle using premium alone because my bmw don't use premium i use it super so is brian saying this on behalf of the ministers hmm? not everybody could afford premium understand that Manning stated that fuel subsidy was a regressive measure that assists the wealthy more than it does the poor whoa I would like to see this I would really like to see this he added that anyone driving a vehicle that requires premium fuel is driving a luxury vehicle and should have no right to a fuel subsidy designed for poverty alleviation. Listen to this. It is my view, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that the subsidy on premium fuel should be completely removed. Anyone driving a vehicle that requires premium fuel is driving a luxury vehicle and should have no right to a fuel subsidy designed for poverty alleviation. Using premium, you're driving a luxury vehicle. Now, these new vehicles that they have on sale, foreign news also, some not settling with the super gas. Ignition rattling, noise, engine bucking. But they are not high end vehicles. They are vehicles that the poor man would purchase. 70, 80, 90,000. And remember, to buy a foreign news vehicle, now you have to have at least 60, 70% of the money before the bank finance you. Remember that. And this vehicle, its best performance is with premium. So let's just say the taxi man using premium, premium in his vehicle. Is he driving a luxury vehicle? Is he driving a luxury vehicle? Hmm? Sometimes I might just listen to these men who is in power, but nothing of substance. Is coming out from their mouth. Two three eight six seven one six is the phone line to call in viewers. I want to hear what you have to say. <clears throat> Just an update. Fares. Price increase. 
taxi driver add on and increase anyhow you want to name it along the Naparima Mayero route are set to increase by one dollar from October 17 a price increase eh? head of the main road taxi drivers association Joseph Joey Badri states that the increase applied to commuters traveling on the Naparima Mayero road commonly called main road passengers pay an extra three dollars to go off route into the different streets at certain points off route they pay up to five dollars Badri said the decision to increase the fares resulted from the latest fuel price increase as announced in the September 26 budget now I can tell you something we as citizens of Trinidad and Tobago just want to know why the taxi drivers increasing their fares now I can tell you this to every liter they burn they pay that dollar at the pump price increase one dollar per liter so every liter they burn they have to make back that dollar in order to put it back so when they go to the pump they will be able to pay the price that were increased now many of us would complain that the fares have gone up in certain areas but the taxi drivers they have no other choice they have no other choice <clears throat> what can they do nothing but increase remember they burn gas by the liters too and i've been hearing some commuters saying well you know taxi driver they shouldn't raise their price everything done gone up already why are they raising their price but their vehicles not working with water and we the citizens fail to realize that they are not working with water and that is the problem we have in addressing like i said <laughs> in groceries now i see some photos with half a butter imagine if i can't buy the whole butter by half imagine that <laughs> but nevertheless nevertheless so the traveling public i want you to understand this yes it will be hard on us yes we understand that but the taxi drivers have expense at the pump and we need to understand that because a lot of taxi drivers short train and tobago contacted me since the price increase on the 26th of september and i said said we cannot do anything about it we have to increase we have to do it they wish that they didn't have to do it but they have no other means and it's obvious when gas price goes up everything goes up everything the minister or the ministry of public utilities will provide electricity and water subsidies for 13,000 low-income customers in 2023 this will be formed this will form part of the social sector investment program for 2023 targeting low-income and underprivileged beneficiaries the program that the ministry will undertake will include the provision of utility bill assistant in which approximately 13,000 low-income customers of Wasa and Tiantec will receive water and electricity subsidies at an estimated cost of three million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars under the provision of water tanks program the ministry will distribute approximately 300 300 800 gallon tanks and 70 1000 gallon tanks to households and five 1,000 gallon tanks to five community facilities. Outreach events will be used to increase accessibility to target application, 
such as the elderly and persons with disabilities. And people residing in rural areas, commuters, who may experience tremendous challenge in accessing these amenities and information. So let's just wait and see when this is going to roll out. If it's 2023, 2024, or 2025. So viewers, you are viewing Real Talk with Said Ali. We are going for our first, first commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to hear about Minister Marvin Gonzalez and his plans about the retrenchment of 2,500 WASA workers and continuing after this break. Tired of wasting precious time at the bank applying for a loan? Only to be denied? We understand your frustration. Here at Real Talk Report Companies, we take a different approach. Contact Said, Managing Director of Real Talk Report Companies and Licensed Moneylender at 238-6716-242-7690 or 339-1670. Feel free to visit our office at number 14 Karani Savannah Road, Chagones or number 122 Supera Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Are you looking for quick cash and do not know where to turn? We have got the answer for you. Visit us at Real Talk Group of Companies. We are a licensed money lending financial institution. We are located at number 14 Karani Savannah Road, Chagones. Our phone numbers are 339-1670, 267-7325, or 238-6716. Contact us today. We look forward to hearing from you. Do you want to make the best investment but not sure where to turn? Put your mind at ease and worry no more. Real Talk Group of Companies is giving you a whopping 3.5% interest on your investments. Come on down and visit us today. We have two convenient locations just for you. Visit us at number 14, Carney Savannah Road, Chagones, or number 132, Cipera Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Sit back and watch your money grow at Real Talk Investment. Do contact us now at 238-6716, 339-1670, or 242-7690. Our team of professionals are waiting for you. Grab this opportunity and invest today. Real Talk Investment, helping real people make real money. This ad was paid for by the Real Talk Group of Companies Limited. Welcome back to Real Talk viewers. Remember, this is the number one current affairs program in Trinidad and Tobago, where we interact with you and you interact with us. Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez have firmly denied that there is a plan by the government to retrench over 2,000 water and surge authority workers, which is WASA workers. This, as opposition leader Kamala Prasad Bissessa alleged that she had been provided with documents which showed that 2,500 500 jobs will be lost at WASA as part of a restructuring exercise. However, in his contribution, Gonzales rubbished the claims and added that there is no action plan approved to reduce 2,000 staff at WASA. He stated that he was unaware of such plan. Listen to this. So when I heard the leader of the opposition talking about some secret strategic plan to reduce staffing in WASA by 2,000, I, I was astounded. I was astounded because the views of the government on the operations of WASA are all contained in a report that was laid before the House. And therefore, and therefore, we have nothing to hide. We have nothing to hide with respect to the operations of WASA. So when the leader of the opposition comes here this morning and talk about some action plan, there is no action plan approved by the government of Trinidad and Tobago to reduce staff by 2,000 employees inside of WASA. I'm not aware. So Marvin, I have a question for you on national television. A 
are they being forced to resign? I'm just saying. You know, birdies are singing in my ears. Do -li -do -li -do -li -do -do -do. You know, I love that tune, you know. <laughs> it's a nice bird, you know. If there is no plans that Wasa have to retrench 2,000 or 2,005 workers, is there a plan? And this is a question I am asking Marvin. Is there a plan to force the workers to retire? I'm asking. Because if you're not forcing them, if you're not retrenching them, are they being forced to resign? So when you're here, they drop all their paperwork in the letter would state that they actually resign instead of retrenched. Marvin, that is a question that you need to come clean with in the public because if I have no plans, no plans to retrench between 2,000 to 2,500 workers, is there a plan to force them to resign so it will not look bad on WASA documents? I don't know, Marvin. I'm just asking a question. Do -li -do -li -do -li -do -do -do. I love that tune, you know. Anytime you hear uh, that bird whistling to my Marvin, you know, it's something serious that is be asking. And it's something serious that the public needs to be aware of. Is there a plan to force them to resign? So on their documents, would we'll state that they resigned and not retrench. Come on, Trinidad and Tobago. This country does business in a different manner. In a different manner. The minister said the government has been transparent with its plan for WASA. And he added that there is one action plan approved by the government with respect to WASA. And that speaks to the improvement of the water for all the people of this country. Gonzalez explained that two years ago, the government laid a report of findings of the cabinet subcommittee on WASA. Listen to this. In their usual style, it is all geared towards riling up the people of Trinidad and Tobago without leveling with them, without any scintilla of truth or decency. And if as a leader of the opposition, you are prepared to come here and talk about some action plan, give us the details. Because I did nothing in this ministry. And so far over the last two years, we have leveled with the people of Trinidad and Tobago with respect to WASA. And there's absolutely nothing to hide. Okay, Marvin. Okay, Marvin. We're not accusing you. I said I'm not accusing you. But what I am asking you, is there a plan to force them to use the word retire? resign other than the word retrench you see there's a difference and i want you to understand something trinidad and tobago i want you all to understand something they said the yes, city was going to restructure how many people were actually going to lose their jobs until the cw stood for them Hmm? Now Marvin saying there's no plan to retrench the workers, some of the workers. But are they technically forcing them to resign? Come on, Marvin. You see, I go tell you something. I have a bird that is whistle. And when that bird whistles in ministry department in Trinidad and Tobago, believe me, it whistles. And reality comes to pass. Reality comes to pass. However, the minister's stated, statement did not convince Princess Town MP Barry Patharat as he quoted from a document he purported to be 
the quality of service standard report of WASA dated August 14, 2022. So what I am asking now, what I am asking now for the opposition leader to do, here we're going on, make your documents go public. You have it? Don't just stay on a platform and talk about it. Make it go public. Send me a copy. Send me a copy. Since this is the number one current affairs program, we're going to make it go real. Hmm? I'm talking a different talk. Ooh, say, be careful, you know. <laughs> so, Marvin, is there a plan to force them to retire? So, Wasa wouldn't have to look bad that they retrenched 2,500 or so workers. Hmm? Let me tell you something. All in a position to use strategies against the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. I am in a position to expose strategies. Oops. Said, be careful. Gonzalez states that the document showed that 52% of all the area in Trinidad and Tobago that are on a scheduled supply for water are non-compliant. Parrot explained that the RIC standard is that customers must receive water for at least 48 hours within a week in terms of scheduling. Parrot also read from a 174 page document of another document which he said was wasa business plan listen to this you see what the member for separia spoke of was a document entitled the strategic business plan and model for wasa that was prepared with government policy to be sent to the Regulated Industries Commission. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it is that strategic business plan and model that will inform whether or not the RIC institute new tariffs and new rates. And also, it will inform how the RIC goes about coming up with those, with those new tariffs and new rates. So when the member speaks about, the member for Lobino Bonnet speaks about the restructuring plan. It's not the restructuring plan we were speaking about. The member for Sibaria has a copy of the strategic business plan that has been finalized to be sent to the Regulated Industries Commission. And on page 53 of that document, Mr. Deputy Speaker, it cannot be disputed because the member for Lopino Bonnet up to now did not dispute the revelation made by the member for Separia that over 2,500 employees of WASA will be sent home. Believe me when I say this. Believe me when I say this. So viewers, we are going for a short commercial break, but when we come back, before we go for this break, listen to this. If you are a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, and you want to be a member of the Real Talk Credit Union, that will be getting a 2% interest on your annual savings. Annual savings at the end of 12 months, you will get 2% interest on your savings. Let's say you have $100,000 in your account at the end of 12 months, you will receive 2,000 interest. Where do we get from other institutions? Eh? Uh, quarter percent. Just imagine a quarter percent and split that into and the taxi on top of that. Boom, what you're getting? And 3.5 on fixed deposit. No entry on Tobago giving you 3.5%. Check it. So, viewers, we are going for a short commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about the PM1s, the private sector, to collaborate with government for affordable homes when we return. Hmm. Tired of wasting precious time at the bank applying for a loan? 
do I need to be denied? We understand your frustration. Here at Renew Truck Repair Companies, we take a different approach. Contact Said, Managing Director of Renew Truck Repair Companies and Licensed Money Lender at 238-6716-242-7690 or 339-1670. Feel free to visit our office at number 14 Karani Savannah Road Chabonis or number 122 Supera Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Are you looking for quick cash and do not know where to turn? We have got the answer for you. Visit us at Real Talk Group of Companies. We are a licensed money lending financial institution. We are located at number 14 Karani Savannah Road, Chaguanas. Our phone numbers are 339 1670, 267 7325, or 238 6716. Contact us today. We look forward to hearing from you. Do you want to make the best investment but not sure where to turn? Put your mind at ease and worry no more. Real Talk Group of Companies is giving you a whopping 3.5% interest on your investments. Come on down and visit us today. We have two convenient locations just for you. Visit us at number 14, Carney Savannah Road, Chagonis, or number 132, Sipera Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Sit back and watch your money grow at Real Talk Investment. Do contact us now at 238 6716. 339-1670 or 242-7690. Our team of professionals are waiting for you. Grab this opportunity and invest today. Real Talk Investment, helping real people make real money. This ad was paid for by the Real Talk Group of Companies Limited. Welcome back to Real Talk viewers. Now listen this, eh? We're going to HDC. Hear this. HDC still have to collect outstanding monies from individuals who rent HDC apartment and house. The Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, is appealing to the private sector to collaborate with the government in more private public partnership that's PPP to provide affordable homes to citizens of Trinidad and Tobago Dr. Rowley states that there are currently 191,000 people awaiting homes from the Housing Development Corporation which is HDC he said such partnership will allow another options for citizens is in the demand on HDC homes. The PM stated that one of the main issues in Trinidad is the availability of affordable housing. Listen to our Prime Minister. One of the biggest well-known problems in this country is the shortage of housing, affordable housing. This is not a new problem. It's a very old problem. And uh, PNM government is very familiar with this problem. One of the things we had to deal with when Mr. Garcia and the housing technicians were dealing with this and coming to the cabinet, we had to ensure that the sale price that will arise out of the construction here fits in the category of affordable units. And in the market in Trinidad and Tobago today, a unit that sells for 1.2 million a family with a reasonable income could afford that rather than have your name on the HDC list and then we get the usual complaints that somebody saying to you well I've applied to the HDC 20 years ago 30 years and I ain't get my house yet that sounds like an impossibility on the way so now Trinidad and Tobago I'm gonna say this there are thousands of HDC homes that are available to citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. But what is the keep back? When you go to a financial institution such as a commercial bank, let's say Republic, Scotia, FCB, with 
Within a 90 day, within 60 to 90 days, you may or may not get approval to purchase a home. Within 90 days, you will get a yes or a no answer. So how come citizens, according to the Prime Minister just now, you've heard that citizens are waiting 5, 10 years, 15 years for houses. There are thousands of HDC houses that the government spent taxpayers' citizen money on to build. But yet, these houses are there standing still. In communities and areas throughout Trinidad and Tobago. We live in Trinidad. We see it. I see it every day. Every government come into power, build a set of houses and put it down. You build 1,000 homes, you have 50 people get keys to it. Why is this? Why? This problem could fix. But the thing is, HDC is not collecting hundreds of thousands of dollars due in rent where some individuals only pay as much as a hundred dollars in rent and that is too much for them to pay while others are paid two and three thousand dollars in rent remember they wanted to i believe it's 1.2 or 1.3 billion dollars that they want to inject into hdc to build houses again. When they can't even collect a couple hundred thousand that is being owed to HTC. Some day last week we did a we did a program with that. But listen to this the PM he added that that is only happening because of the HTC is being seen as the only opportunity for most people to get a home. It belongs to the government. The government funding that is tax paying citizen money. Who do you think is paying for it? The taxes that the government collects, it goes to these projects. It goes to these projects. And who benefits from it? The citizens supposed to be benefiting, but if the government is not giving out houses, how the hell the citizens will benefit? And now we want to ask the private sector to partnership. Or they're wasting time. Mama guy in the public is not something I will stand by and watch you all do to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. However, the PM noted that the private sector will soon make available homes for $1.2 million and a full family unit for $1.5 million. That is affordable to the middle class people who are on the list of HUC houses, um, HUC house list. Listen to this. It's only happening largely because the HDC is being seen as the only opportunity for most people to get a house, especially new families who are just starting out and would like to get their first unit within the measure of their income. But with the private sector, with government assistance and involvement, getting involved and building houses, two bedrooms, as mentioned, with all the amenities for 1.2 million, and three bedrooms, full family units for 1.5 billion, that is eminently affordable to the middle class people who are on the list of the HDC. What more can we see? The traveling public of Trinidad and Tobago that passes in areas that the government built houses and left it, not the government, HUC built houses and left it there. What are they going to do with all those houses that have been built and left standing still for the last couple of years? What are they going to do with that? Because there are parts of Trinidad that if you drive through, you will see abandoned HUC houses. Abandoned HUC houses. What are we going to do with that? What is HUC doing about that? What is social development doing about that? How many houses have went down the ditch? Let's just say because of a wasa line 
or a landslip. Thousands of houses put down there doing nothing. But a homeowner who is in distress of their house had to go down a landslide. They had to build a two-bedroom um, galvanized structure and stay in it. You know why? Those houses, it is too important for the government that they give you. How do you call that? That's why you call government working for the people. Call a good night. Yes, sir. Good night. My friend, go right ahead. Sir, I see a question on the HTC point, buddy. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you one question, right? Any of these houses you're talking about already built, right? Were they built under the People's Partnership government? <laughs> I don't know if I'm asking. Because you know government come, government go. They have this mindset that anything the last regime built, they're not opening and they're not giving it to people and they make us an excuse and want to do their own thing. Now, what I'm trying to find out is that I hear Kate Rowley coming and talking about partnering with, with private sector and all the things. How are they working? I'm trying to understand how they are working for the people that get in the unit. And the next thing, right, is that I listen to everything you're saying concerning WhatsApp. And it's only, it, it's like deja vu, we're going all over again. You remember, you can only come and say, you know, closing up the Correct. You remember that? People forget that. Well, you same thing Marvin Gonzalez doing, and he say that when they're not telling them people, and I bet you after the local election come and go, whoever to go home, going home. That is how, that is how it's set in motion, but I was looking at some videos, and I, I, I noticed somebody post up some documents with Marvin Gonzalez, I asked some woman to work in Wasa and she was working for about $40,000 a month. I don't know how, how that much you can know. hold. So you can hire somebody this year to work in Wasa for that amount of money. And then you're laying off 2,500 people. I don't know. I, don't, I just asked her a question. Anyway, sir, you, you enjoy your night. Thank you, my friend. Trinidad and Tobago is hurting. This admission came from Rural, Rural Development and Local Government Minister Faris Al Rawi. Strong statement there, you know. Trinidad and Tobago is hurting. That is a strong statement. This, as he hinted, a 1,000 jobs to come in local government sector and detail methods to assist local government corporations to work more effectively or more efficiently. To serve the public. Listen to Faris. Madam Speaker, Trinidad and Tobago is hurting. Our people feel a sense of, how should I say, of difficulty that is expressed on a daily basis in many places. If you go online, if you look at the print media, if you listen to the airwaves, the world has come and all issues affecting us reside here in Trinidad and Tobago. I recognize, Madam Speaker, that people don't want to hear so much about what's happening in the Ukraine or what's happening in other countries. People want to know what's happening here and how they think their lives can be better done when i tell you these people is be listening to me all of this feel is joke <laughs> all of this feel is joke Faris, you're good i love your statements he stated that persons are characterizing the budget contribution as old talk and Rawi said the increase in Trinidad and Tobago and globally were well known, but the time, the items the government had to spend on housing, food hamper, construction, etc., had also increased. He added that the budget was an attempt in a situation where everything costs more to shift the burden a little bit. And he noted that the government was paying more than $1.5 billion on fuel subsidy and taxes, taxpayers are paying $550 million. Al-Rawi states that he was hopeful 
for a better TNT, even though he knows these are difficult times, people are hurting, wage negotiations are ongoing, but said a little bit more here and there. Listen to Faris. Madam Speaker, Trinidad and Tobago is hurting. Our people feel, Madam Speaker, I am hopeful of a better Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, these are difficult times. Yes, people are hurting. Yes, wage negotiations are going on. Yes, global inflation has arrived at our door. Yes, we have to take a little bit more here and there. But Madam Speaker, everybody in this room sitting on the benches, opposite and government, we are all elected members of parliament. They are hurting here and they are hurting there. They are hurting all over Trinidad and Tobago. But the price of fuel increase twice in one year, we are not just hurting, we are bleeding. That is what has taken place in Trinidad and Tobago. However, Al Rawi added that he was confident of job creation, enduring or ensuring roads and service are better delivered and the municipal, municipal police can bring safer environments listen to this i am confident of job creation i am confident that we can improve service deliverability i am confident that we can ensure that our road conditions and our services are better delivered i am confident that the municipal police can bring a more safe environment as we move to 1,500 as opposed to 771 of them, Madam Speaker, litter wardens, etc., Trinidad and Tobago, we hear you. It's tough. Your government is with you. We're prepared to take the lash. We have to. We signed up for the job. But Madam Speaker, to my colleagues in this parliament, I am here at your service. It's why the first thing I did in coming in is to put the hashtag I am LG. Let me tell you something. English nice, you know. <laughs> but productivity, production will be, will, will, let me tell you something. It will blaze any old talk. I like to see production. Words is like the breeze blowing. Production, let me see it and I'll let you know about the words. Speaking on a road problem, he said, People of TNT, the government hears you. The Prime Minister hears you. Let me see who here in here. Listen to this. People of Trinidad and Tobago, I hear you. The government hears you. The Prime Minister hears you. The potholes, the state and condition of our roads, it burns us. It aggravates us. Yes, I could give you a good reason that we spent on salaries. Yes, I can say that we spent $10 billion in deficit, $17 billion. $13 billion in deficit to make sure that people were employed. But Madam Speaker, I understand, the government understands, the Prime Minister ensured that a company called Secondary Road Repair, along with Pure, got the mission to carry out the roads. Yes, it might be coming late. Yes, there was a good reason. Yes, we know you're hurting, Madam Speaker. But Madam Speaker, I want to assure the people of Trinidad and Tobago, as a minister that is on the road in service of the people every single day, pillar to post in local government in Trinidad, everywhere. It's why we engage in a national cleanup campaign. So viewers, we are going for a short commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about Kamala's plan if UNC returns to government after this break. Do you want to make the best investment but not sure where to turn? Put your mind at ease and worry no more. Real Talk Group of Companies is giving you a whopping 3.5% interest on your investments. Come on down and visit us today. We have two convenient locations just for you. Visit us at number 14, Carney Savannah Road, Chagones, or number 132, Sipera Road, Victoria Village, San Fernando. Sit back and watch your money grow at Real Talk Investment. Do contact us now at 238-6716. 
or 242-7690. Our team of professionals are waiting for you. Grab this opportunity and invest today. Real Talk Investment, helping real people make real money. This ad was paid for by the Real Talk Group of Companies Limited. Are you looking for quick cash and do not know where to turn? We have got the answer for you. Visit us at Real Talk Group of Companies. We are a licensed money lending financial institution. We are located at number 14 Carney Savannah Road, Chaguanas. Our phone numbers are 339 1670 267 7325 or 238 6716. Contact us today. We look forward to hearing from you. Must re examine its plan for Petrotrin. We are proposing to restart our refinery. By reopening Petrotrin, we will have greater fuel security. We will save foreign exchange, we will provide meaningful jobs, and of course, we will gain uh, for, for ex, um, foreign exchange revenue and to continue to contribute to the Treasury. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, that was the opposition leader, Kamala Pasabi Sessa, saying if they come back into power, if they are re elected into power, UNC was proposing to restart. A reform point at Pierre Refinery. She added that by reopening Petrotrain, there will be greater fuel security, foreign exchange, meaningful jobs, and ensuring that the companies continue to contribute to the Treasury. That is what she said if they return to power in the next three or four years. Now, listen to this. Earlier in her response, she said the budget tax break was too small for a worker to buy even a doubles. And noted that the first recommendation she had was to ease the tax burden on citizens and business post COVID 19. Passat Business states that if the UNC was elected, they would simplify the personal and corporation tax income tax regime and simplify the VAT regime by removing more basic food from the VAT network. Listen to this. The first recommendation we have is, one, reduce tax burden. Reduce the tax burden. We believe reducing the heavy tax burden on our citizens and businesses most affected by the COVID-19 pandemic will help citizens start to regain their footing. I had mentioned before about the VAT regime and the fact that we will again remove basic food items from the VAT net and improve the efficiency of the tax system by strengthening the BIR, the VAT office, and customs and exercise. We will also simplify the personal corporate income tax regime as well as the VAT regime. Now Trinidad and Tobago, the opposition leader also added that she believes there must be a jump start to the agriculture sector by leasing 25,000 acres of former agricultural land and spending at least 10% of the public sector investment program to develop agriculture, agricultural access roads for agricultural parks. Listen to this. Our second booster to the economy, to help the economy to recover, is to jumpstart food security, and I just mentioned some of those initiatives. We believe there must be a jump start to our agriculture sector, and I gave some of the uh, uh, some of the plans there, and we commit that we should spend at least 10 percent of the PSIP to de develop the agricultural access roads, irrigation and drainage for agricultural parks. We will also incentivize the private sector to establish an agro-processing plan. There will be no wastage or dumping of produce, which is a bane for many of our farmers. So you hear that? That is a promise by UNC leader, Kamla Prasad Bissasa. Hear this. Social Development and Family Service Minister Donna Cox stated that her ministry continues to collaborate with the police to crack down on instances where persons have been illegally accessing access to various grants offered by her ministry to help poor and vulnerable people. 
Cox stated that her ministry found cases where several adults were living in living in one household and were in recipient of public assistance grant despite the fact that they were employed. Listen to this. Only recently we found cases where several adults were living in one household and were in receipt of public assistance grants despite owning a business and despite the fact that they had meaningful employment. She added that there were cases where persons who were receiving disability grant from the ministry were fully employed and some were working for state agencies. The minister said as a result of these fraudulent activities, the minister had, has had arrangement to interrogate the payroll data to identify clients abusing the system. Madam Speaker, we are discovering cases where persons are in receipt of disability grant but are in full-time employment, even with state agencies. One such case shows that the officer has been employed for over 25 years in the public service and paid national insurance. The client was declared permanently disabled and unable to earn a living by a doctor. Yet that person was permanently employed. And this has warranted the need for the ministry to make arrangements to encourage, interrogate the payroll data to identify clients abusing the system. It has also forced the ministry to commence a review exercise of all the grants to ensure compliance. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, with regards to the Audit General Report, where it was reported that 61 individuals below the age of 65 were receiving senior citizen pension. 47 of those cases were closed. Cox stated that 14 of those cases are outstanding. It is expected that 8 will be sent to Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago Police Service for further investigations. On the heels of the Auditor General's report, where it was reported that 61 individuals below the age of 65 years was receiving senior citizens' pension. The Investigation and Compliance Unit, through its investigations, was able to close 47 of those cases. 14 of those cases remain outstanding and are expected to be closed by December 2022. After 14, it is expected that eight will be sent to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service for further investigation. And this, Madam Speaker, is only the tip of the iceberg, as more than 34 other cases are already being processed by the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. And I must reiterate that financial resources meant for the poor and vulnerable must be received by them and not siphoned away by dishonest persons for their own use. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, we are at the end of our program for tonight. But nevertheless, I have some information for you. Realtor Credit Union, that is being information presently. Those of you who would like to be members of our organization, please contact us. You want to be a member? Nothing problem. You want to have better earnings, better reward, better fixed deposit rates? You want to be a member? Contact us. At two three eight six seven one six three three nine one six seven zero two six seven seven three two five or two four two seven six nine zero. So viewers, remember, you get a better interest rate on your annual savings. Three point five percent on fixed deposit. Your kid wants to be a member of Real Talk Credit Union? Not a problem. Give us a call. Give us a call, set up an appointment, come in and meet with us. We will take your information and let your business start with us. So viewers, I am Saeed Ali. You are viewing Real Talk with Saeed Ali, live on Synergy Network from Monday to Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. There's a rerun tomorrow from 11 to 30 a.m. to 12 to 30 p.m. We are on TikTok, Saeed Ali. Real Talk, we are on Facebook, Real Talk with Side Ali, we are on YouTube, Fiti, 
real talk, subscribe, and you would know when we go live. So until we meet again, viewers, ala anta maturba, ala ente bila hunu rukhoba la azama. When our offer is coming until you grasp the opportunity and watch it grow. Good night.